Hey, we're five and a half rows high. That's seven foot four. And you can see here we have our stack joint on this wall. We have our radius going on over here, another corner here. There's no stack joint on this wall. It just happened to work. Um, and all the way around, it worked out pretty good. We got our markings on what the numbers are supposed to be. We, we use a felt pen for that. Hey, this is the only opening in this foundation that we're building. It's 36 by 26. And what we do is we add two inches to the rough opening. So this opening here, we're going, we've cut it at exactly 40 inch. So you take two inches off each side of that, it's gonna end up being 36 inch rough opening. And we're gonna use the Fox Buck for that. So the Fox Buck is exactly two inches thick. And so we'll show you that as we build it. So we, we make these cuts and we build the whole structure without the buck in place. That way we can put all of our rebar in, make sure everything's right, then we put the Fox Buck in last. Okay. Hey, I'm over here. You can see we put the bracing on the outside on this job. That's because there was over a foot of gravel on the inside and the pound of peg and the gravel like this marble gravel that they have, it's gonna be really difficult to get any holding power. So we did it on the outside, but the bank was so close that we had to put the feet all the way up onto the bank. That actually helps us because we get a lot of really good um, lateral movement when we adjust the bracing. It's really easy to fine tune the bracing and get a nice straight wall. Now we don't always do it this way and we do have these brackets on here that are holding the planks. The planks are not resting on the turnbuckles so the turnbuckles can still work fine. And we're doing on center here we were going five foot six on center. Actually it's five foot four, eight inch on center. So it's five foot four and the reason we did that is the longest planks that this contractor had was 12 foot. And so if we went six foot on center, it'd be really hard to get an overlap with the planks. So we have to look at what kind of planks are available on site to know what spacing we put the, bra the bracing on. They put these st stiff backs up against the wall first, put one screw per course, and then they put the turnbuckle on and then they put the scaffold bracket on. That's the process for putting on the bracing. Hey, so they've got to the top row now. They're going 10 foot exactly off of the bottom, so that's seven and a half row. They did the, the bottom row, they split in half, so they use a, the eight inch piece, and they could use both pieces because we're a reversible block, right? So they did that on the bottom row because we need the interlock on the top so we can continue on up because we're going another two floors higher than this. So on this top row, because this is the top row of this pour, we're gonna be placing concrete about halfway up on this pour. We clipped on, and if there's a joint, wherever there's a joint, we go the second tie on either side and we clip with horizontal clips, or vertical clips, I mean, and we clamp this top row down to the row below. And that's important because when you get a wet load of concrete, that'll shoot into, and it'll want to roll up and pop that top row off. So that those clips are really gonna help you. Now, uh, what else have we got here? We have a window yet. You can see that there's no buck on it yet. So what we're gonna do, we've made that two inches too big all the way around, took the rough opening side, added four inches top and bottom, or the side to side, top to bottom, and um, we're gonna now cut the fox buck and glue it in place, and then brace it on the inside ready for concrete. So that's about it, we're ready now. You can see the radius is done, all the corners are done. Now we have to do strapping. We still have to put a screw in the top of our bracing, to help hold it because it's a little bit loose right there. And then we're ready to let this thing sit. Now it's important to keep these walls nice and straight at this point because we're gonna be placing concrete into them and if they are not straight, they will stay not straight during concrete. Even if you straighten them just before concrete because they have a memory and it's good to have it for a day or so in a straight position just so that it holds its position during the concrete pour. So that's about it. Uh, we wanna keep this top tie, the plastic tie in the fox blocks, we want to keep that free from concrete. So when we put the concrete in, we'll keep it only halfway up on this block and that will allow us to take our HV clips and clip onto it to clamp that next row down. That's going to help us in a big way.